In today's video, we're going to look at how Alexa Von Tobel transformed an idea into a $250 million website. But before we go ahead and get started here today, let me introduce myself. My name is Christopher Brown from alphalifestyleacademy.com. And so in today's video, again, we're going to look at how uh, is we're going to look at an article from our blog and to look at how Alexa Von Tobel transformed an idea into a $250 million website. Now, if you have any questions about anything that we're going to go over in today's video, we have this nice little question box um, down in the, in the bottom right hand corner of our blog. And that blog is alphalifestyleacademy.com. You can just reach out to our support staff and they'll answer any questions that you do have. So just a little bit of a summary of who Alexa Von Tobel is. She built a financial education website. There's a lot of financial education websites out there. Um, but hers, she, she had a niche. Uh, a target market. She went over after a specific type of person. And the person that, the type of uh, person that she was going after is young women, typically who recently graduated college and helped them to get a hold under on their financial situation to understand money, investing, and all that type of stuff. Um, and because of that, because she really spoke to her audience well, um, she was able to build a email newsletter subscriber list of about 1.5 million subscribers. And then because of that, um, she built an asset. And, uh, and so she was, she was able to sell her website along with its subscriber base for $250 million. So the website, we're going to look at the website, what she was doing. We're going to learn some lessons and so that we can apply that into our businesses. But, um, the reason that Northwestern Mutual bought this website was not because of the design or anything like that, but the, but the marketing principles behind it. I and mean, what they really wanted is they wanted that 1.5 million subscribers. That's why they bought the website. So let's go ahead and review what she did. Um, building some, some business principles that she used to build this website. And that way you can look at these principles and see what, what are the takeaways. And that way you can apply it to some of the things that you're doing. Now, if you've seen some of our previous videos, you know, the, the things that many companies are doing online, that these really successful companies uh, are doing online, it, it's not a new idea. Now, the technology may be new. However, the things that many of these successful companies are doing online, it's what companies were doing in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. You see, in those days, companies were less concerned with getting their name known and were more concerned with making sales. Makes sense, you know. Shouldn't we be focusing on sales? Uh, seems evident to me, but a lot of people and companies are really focusing, they're focusing on, do they know who I am? That is important. That is very important, but uh, we want to be making sales. So let's look at an example of the type of advertising that was done in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. So uh, I've showed you this before, if you've seen some of our other previous videos, but this is a big, this quick ad from the back cover of a 1931 Cosmo magazine. Now, as you notice on the bottom right hand corner, as you can see right here, so on the bottom right hand corner, um, there's a coupon that a person can cut up and rip off and mail it in to the office and they will get a free Bisquick cookbook. And so what this cookbook do, then does is it educates their audience and highlights the importance of why a person should go ahead and cook with Bisquick. Now, Many companies today require too big of a financial commitment too fast to start doing business with them because the more expensive your products are, the more trust you have to develop before they will start to buy from you. So you want to start off with a free trial offer. Now, back in the 30s, this commonly was done by a, a you know, a, a little coupon like, like they just did. Um, it was done through mail order. Now, normally in today's world, a lot of times this is done through email. And yes, there is a lot of excitement around social media. However, when it comes down to spending money, more money is spent through email than any other marketing channel. Now, the way that Alexa did this is by offering a free membership with an opt-in form on her website. So as you can see here, this is uh, learnvest.com. 
Um, nice branding. I always thought this was aesthetically pleasing, but as you can see right here, there's a little form that they could put in their name and their email and uh, subscribe to their inbox magazine or their email newsletter. Um, it was an email, but it was very professionally done, as you'll see here in a moment, and it was almost like an actual magazine. Now, another strategy that Alexa used uh, is what is known as the gold rush principle. That's called the Gold Rush Principle because uh, because Samuel Brennan became the first millionaire during the California Gold Rush. Now, he did so not by finding goals, but by selling picks, shovels, and the different tools that the prospectors needed. Now, many businesses today follow in that exact same principle. And the way that they do this is they offer supportive services that then enable them to sell more of their products and services. Now, the way Alexa did this is by selling a book, as you can see here on Amazon, uh, Financially Fearless. And what that book did for her, it is she didn't make a lot of money from the book, but what it did is it gave her credibility. It established her as the most credible expert in her field. So if you're a young college graduated woman, um, you're majorly in debt from your college education, and you want to start learning about finances and some ways to get out of debt. So who are you going to listen to? Uh, most likely you're going to listen to somebody like like uh, Alexa here. Um, you're going to relate to her, understand the way she speaks. You know, there's a lot of, there's a there's going to be a connection uh, versus somebody on, you know, the financial news channel or something. That, that woman is not going to relate to that person. So the way that many other experts build up their credibility, not only Alexa, but many experts, is by using a book that and that is what led to many of their successes and where many of these people are today. Um, I don't have this in the article here, but you got uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's how he got started um, back in the day. And yes, he was a bodybuilder, but he started offering bodybuilding books and courses. And and uh, at, at that time, he was going by the name of Arnold Strong. Um, you got Bulletproof Coffee. Uh, they have a, a they they have a book. And that built the $60 million coffee brand, uh, putting them in competition with a lot of the big, you know, coffee brands that we know of today. I can go through lists and lists of different experts and different companies who have used this model in order to build their brand because uh, it, it's not what you do. You know, chances are you have a lot of people who are in the same business as you take, for instance, real estate. You know, how many other real estate agents are there? There's there's tons of them. But uh, what you want to do is you want to establish yourself as the most credible expert in your field. And this is what what uh, um, Alexa did here. So let's move on to the next section. Let's look at the, the other principle that she used. So let me ask you a question here. Your favorite TV shows. Why do you watch them? Your favorite magazines. Why do you read them? Do you read them for the ads? Of course not. So your favorite TV show, shows and uh, your favorite magazines, you read them because you want to be entertained and or learn something. Now, this is exactly what Alexa did with her email newsletter. Now, when people read the articles in her daily newsletter, she included advertisements to some of her products. And even though her readers enjoy what they're learning, some of them took advantage of her products and services. So as you can see here, here is the, um, the newsletter. So, uh, it's, it's again, aesthetically pleasing. It's a little bit more per professional than what you see in a lot of emails. And so here's the featured story. And then down here, here are, um, some of the other, uh, stories. And then there's a sponsorship with, with Chase down here. So the purpose of advertising is, when somebody has built a large enough following that they can send out a message to that following, they only need a small percentage of that following to respond to the message in order to reach their income goals. However, it may take a lot of time and financial resources in order to build a large enough following to reach that income goal. Resources that many of you just don't have. 
But just think how much easier it would be to find somebody who is already successful, perhaps somebody who is spending that tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands each and every month in advertising and have them send out a message to their following endorsing you and what you have to offer. Now, this is exactly what Alexa did to build LearnVest. Now, according to an, an article interview from scripted.com, if you're following along in the blog post, you can go ahead and check out that article. So LearnVest focused on content marketing and went out as a newsletter to their audience, which was growing organically. But they also put in place syndications and business development deals. So the, as the article mentions today, we went from having 4,000 referrals outside of newbies coming to the site each and every month. Now we have 150,000 referrals per month. And that's because uh, with 50 syndicate partners like ForbesMagazine.com, Daily Finance, The Wall Street Journal, New York Magazine, Huffington Post, they have a total of about 50 different syndication relationships in place. So basically what they have is they have joint venture arrangements and those publications are then pushing out Alexa's uh, content. So it's uh, learnvest.com content to their subscriber list, okay? Now, they also hired a development person or business development person, which is basically a joint venture broker. And that person was there to dedicated to grow the network. And the article mentions it's taken them about uh, two years to really have the success by building strong relationships and building enough trust within those relationships. Now, people love the idea of using somebody else's following to build their customer base, but going from idea to putting this into action is too much to ask for for so many smaller companies because they already have so many issues that they have to handle. So what I wanna do is I wanna invite you to work with us where we can partner up together and put a project like this together, which you can see at 90daymillionaire.alphalifestyleacademy.com. Now, as you can see, these are, uh, so Alexa is a Harvard graduate and she used joint ventures to build her $100 million financial empire. Uh, some of the biggest companies in the world have used joint ventures. So there's really no, no need for you to spend money in advertising. It's one of the greatest predictors of success because only about 5% of businesses will ever make a million dollars in, in any single year in their entire business career and just 5% of businesses use joint ventures. So again, I want to invite you to visit 90daymillionaire.alphalifestyleacademy.com or if you're watching this video on our blog, you can just go ahead and click on this little button down here at the bottom of our blog and that's 90daymillionaire.alphalifestyleacademy.com. Now to blast recording this video for here today, take care everyone, have a great day and we'll see you in our next video. And like I said, if you have any questions or anything, you can reach out to us, uh, reach out to our support staff um, over here in this little chat box on the bottom right hand corner. But take care everyone, have a great day and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.